Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Michael Dean, podcastjuice.net. Listen, last week we did an interview with Damon Dixon, and uh, within that interview, Damon talked about a funny story between Prince and Miko, had a little bit of words at a rehearsal, and uh, since then, Miko has come out and put out his own version and gave us even more details what was really popping off at that situation. And it's pretty funny. Uh, chopped it up with Miko a little bit today. So he's cool with the sharing here on the channel. We just want to make sure everybody gets a chance to see this. So salute to Miko. Uh, but here's his take on the story. Working like a job. See you next time. Peace. Yo, 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 yo. What's up? All you Prince fan people out there. Uh... I got something I got to clear up a little bit. There's uh, rumors going around, or, or I don't know. I've seen it. People told me like they have on YouTube videos about a so-called fight between Prince and myself. Uh, so, yeah, there was many, but uh, they, they wasn't really like what you think. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about that later. But uh, in this particular incident, there was a lot of celebrities there because we're doing the last run through before they had to break the equipment down and send it over to Europe. Okay, so we get ready to start, you know, to play, but my guitar was kind of like not really set up yet. So uh, Prince kind of like, you know, he looked at me and said, hey man, what's going on? You know, we ready to start and all of that. And I could already tell something was kind of bothering him a little bit, but you know, I wasn't tripping. So then when we started, all of a sudden, well, let me tell you about my guitar. You know, it didn't have any volume knobs on it, so you couldn't turn it up or down or nothing. It was just straight, direct to disc, you know, straight to the mixing board. That's how I designed it, you know, it's custom made. But anyway, uh, so what happened, the guitar just became incredibly loud, too loud. And so I turned and looked at the sound guy. And while I was doing that, Prince got really upset. And on the microphone, he started kind of like screaming at me and shit. And so I, uh, you know, I said, oh, no, I'm not having that. So I walked over to him and I said, hey, look, man, if you want to talk to me, we can go to your office. And then he kind of looked at me and said, you about to do for an ass whooping. And so, man, I started, I looked around if his bodyguards was there around or the security. And I go, you, I didn't see them. I said, you mean you? I said, okay, come on, man. So I laid the guitar on the floor and I, and I start walking through Paisley Park, you know, from the sound stage, you know, it's quite a walk. So he followed me and I think all the rest of the people were following, I'm, you know. And so when we got towards the door, uh, one other little thing, my, I used to have a Corvette at that time and I used to park in his parking space in front of Paisley Park because he would uh, park in the basement. So I had, would give, I had given my car to some guys that used to go clean it for me. And when they would bring it back, they had it all glistening and it was parked in his space. And they used to leave me a big fat joint in it. That's another subject. But anyway, so when I came to the door, I said, okay, come on, man. Come on, come outside. I'm a, uh, it's a field over here. I'm getting ready to cut it all down with your ass. And so he looked at me and then he, he opened the door and he said, get out of my building. And so I kind of laughed and I said, okay, man, I'm out of here. And I jumped, you know, I did cowboy style. I just, I didn't even open the door. I just jumped into uh, the car directly, blazed up that joint, and then rolled down that road. If you've been in Paisley Park, you know it's a roll long road going out there in the sun. It was kind of like a cowboy riding off in the sunset. So anyway, I went home and I took a shower and I went to the discotheque. And so later, uh... You know, I was in the discotheque dancing on the floor and when his uh, security dudes came and said, hey, Prince is here, he want to talk to you. And so I went up to where he was sitting down somewhere. And so I went over there and sat by him. And then I said, it was my turn now. So I said, hey man, what are you screaming at me in front of all these people and all that? You know I'm not heavily that kind of stuff. You know, I've been with you six years, no, never laid, no missed passports, no, no, no things and no missed notes, no nothing. So, you know, you can't be handling me like that. And then he said, yeah, man, I know, I'm sorry, man. I've been under pressure with this film, you know, and all of that, and the tour and all of that. I was just under a little bit too much pressure, and, you know, I did all of that. I'm sorry, shit. I said, well, now you have to pay. So you got to double my per diem and double my salary for this tour. And he was like, what? He said, man, a real musician wouldn't be wanting that money. And I go, oh, I'm so glad I'm not a real musician. You better pay me, fool. And so anyway, we kind of laughed and shit. And then uh, that was it. No big deal. And then when I went on the tour and did the thing. Now, the reason why I left, I'll tell you guys about that something else. So, you know, but uh, a lot of the stuff me and Prince would do was staged because 
we were doing theater concerts. That's what made it so special, you know. And a lot of people, you know, uh, were seeing it extraordinary, but we were actually in theater. We were acting. So I was playing the villain. He's playing the knight in shining armor. And Cat was the damsel in distress. So uh, if you check out the love sexy thing, you'll see little bits of that implemented into the show. You know, where I'm coming, taking the girl and all this stuff, going with the songs. And we, we continued that. I was doing that all the way until Sign of the Times. Uh, I had too much to play then. I was handling too much of his guitar parts, my guitar parts, a whole bunch of stuff. So I had the role went over to Brooks. Now, if you can watch the film, you'll see that. Uh, Brooks is now taking over the the guy taking the girl thing. You know, Prince was re really in the, the theatrical part, and that's what made everything special. So anyway, now you guys can have a look at that. I hope it cleared up everything and all of that. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll start talking a little bit more. But, you know, a lot of the stuff that I have heard other people say don't don't kind of correspond with what I'm, what I, my experiences and shit, and I don't want anybody to be, you know, accused of fabricating what actually happened, so it's better one of us be quiet, so I think it'll be me, I don't know, because I don't want to hurt nobody with all of this stuff, okay, so anyway, I just want to offer you guys some peace and some love, and you guys mask up, all right, stay safe, peace forward.